Now, on with the big release. The Sharp Edge One had this out. Said the FBI just raided the Cleveland office building. I recorded the video of them actually uh, going through the building. You'll have that play while they're going through. You notice that... Uh, Remember, uh, Comey was fired from the FBI. It's amazing how many people were actually moved from removed from the FBI since President Trump uh, entered the office. It seems like they were, remember, they were on Epstein Island also going through his stuff. And who did they uh, go after? The FBI's raided the offices of U.S. companies owned by a powerful Ukrainian tycoon linked to President Volodymyr Zelensky. The FBI searched offices in Cleveland and Miami on August 4th, belonging to billionaire Ihor Kolomoisky, whose media company informally backed Zelensky's successful presidential bid in 2019. Quote, I confirm that I can confirm that we are at both locations. That was from the FBI special agent Vicki Anderson Gregg. So continuing on with this, what's interesting as uh, I put these stories in the description box below you can actually uh, go and click on these and share them with your friends and family the fbi spokeswoman vicki anderson said that agents searched the offices of optima management group in one cleveland center so now we're getting more specific at east 9th street and st Clair avenue a spokeswoman for the spokesman for the IRS also said his agency's investigators were present. So not only FBI, but IRS. Now, it's interesting that before I continue on, you notice the number of photos released by this particular news organization, 17 photos released. All right, continuing on, Anderson said agents also executed search warrants at an office in Miami. Federal authorities in Cleveland have been conducting a wide-ranging probe involving Ukrainian oligarch Igor Kolomowski that has been ongoing for quite some time. Kolomowski is a principal of the private group, a large Ukrainian business company, and principals of the company are also part of Optima. Now, the financial news outlet places Kolomowski's net worth at about $1 billion, give or take a dollar. He remains a complicated political figure in his home country. He is a former governor of Ukraine's region. Published reports said that Kolomowski had refused to set up a meeting with President Donald Trump's ally, Rudy Giuliani. Remember that? When Rudy went over there to uh, do his investigations. And Ukrainian President Zelensky in an attempt to dig up dirt against Democratic presidential nom nominee Joe Biden last year. Well, continuing on, remember this? So uh, old Biden made a phone call that was recorded, and that's where, this is where the connections are going to happen here, folks. Remember, he said, uh, I'm a man of my word, and now that the new prosecutor general is in place, we're ready to move forward to signing that new $1 billion loan guarantee, and I don't know how you want to go about that. Let's listen to that. All the time when I hear your voice, it's a great pleasure for me. Well, I'm on Air Force Two, and I think we're going to stay connected. We just took off, and I'm hoping this connection will stay open. Do you mean that uh, um, uh, there is a new government and a, uh, a new prosecutor general? So he's on Air Force Two making this call. It seems like he's uh, just left. And you know that uh, in 2006, Ukrainian Prosecutor General Viktor Shokin, in his investigation of corruption involving Burisma Holdings, a natural gas company, identified Hunter Biden as the recipient of over $3 million from the company. And continuing on, not wanting this corruption exposed, Joe Biden swung into action using U.S. loan guarantees as hostage while demanding Shokin be fired. Amazingly, Joe Biden now brags about his actions in this matter. Let's just uh, have a reminder of this particular interview once again. 
Um, I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion-dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to the press conference. Said, "No, I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, "You're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here." And I think it was what six hours. I looked. I said, "I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money." Well, son of a bitch, <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. Yeah, so he's bragging about his crime. Sharp Edge continued, so $1.8 billion in taxpayer dollars were uh, sent to Ukraine to bail them out. But where did the money go? To one bank. Private bank. It was a giant money laundering slush fund scheme, and who was the recipient of this $1.8 billion of taxpayer U.S. aid? Ask Hunter. And so you remember we had some CUE drops, one of them was from 7 February 2020. Remember, uh, think Hussein White House refusal to send weapons to Ukraine. Republican Congress pushed to assist, but instead sent only blankets. Think the Democrats' attacks regarding the President of the United States for failure to protect Ukraine against Russian oppression, aggression. Impeachment. Remember that? What advanced weapons did the POTUS send to Ukraine? And then think 1.8 billion Hussein Whitehouse to the Ukraine. Which bank? <laughs> now we know. We've seen it. It's been playing out quite a bit in our news reports that have been put out. And uh, then we had them that long drop recently in 31 July 2020. What are they trying to do on this uh, C-19 that's been released to the public? What are they trying to do with it? Well, one of them, on number four, is shelter Biden from Ukraine exposure. Change the narrative. Get the media to focus on C-19 day in and day out. That's all they keep doing. Every single press secretary briefing. Every time the president is goes to the media, they're questioning how could he leave this nation open when there's so many positives. How could he let the kids go to school? How could he have an election? We need mail-in ballots. They're going to keep pounding that drum and try to wear us down. Continuing on with something very interesting was, remember we were talking about this uh, drop from the CUE in uh, 31 July, and then we had a drop in 7 February. Well, in February, there was a great piece put together, series by Glenn Beck, about uh, Ukraine and the connections. Now, who are we talking about here? We're talking about this guy right here, offices raided, Kolomoisky, right? Then we talk about Joe Biden. Joe Biden uh, making phone calls with, you know, folks to let them know you better get rid of that uh, that guy that's uh, going after my son. If you do that, you get your billion. We know that we have the intel drops straight from the president and his uh, leadership team. And then we have uh, Glenn Beck did a full Ukraine series, and check out one part out of those videos that just happened to fall right in my lap as I was doing some research about Kolomoisky. But the money was frozen at 23 million while the UK was looking into that and tracking it. As that was happening, as they had frozen the accounts and everyone in the world in the government knew that that money was being frozen, Hunter Biden joined the Burisma board. Okay, well, maybe Dad didn't tell him. Okay, I don't think that's possible, but maybe Dad didn't tell him. Not only did he not seem to care about his new company being investigated for stealing and laundering money, he also apparently didn't mind that the primary owner of Burisma, a guy named Kolomoisky, we've told you about him before, he was on a U.S. visa ban list. Now, we've told you that, but once we really started looking into him, 
oh, now we get a different picture. He's, why is he banned from traveling? Why, why does the United States say, don't do any business with him? Because he was on this ban list from the United States for, get this, murders and beheadings. Also hiring rowdies armed with chainsaws and using brute force to intimidate rival companies. Uh, this guy seems to be the Tony Soprano. This is a really bad guy. This didn't phase either of the Bidens at all. And wouldn't you know it, a few months later, this guy that was banned for arming rowdies with chainsaws and performing beheadings with them magically got a brand new visa to go to the U.S. Now, why would Joe Biden, why would Joe Biden clear this guy? violent background, banned from the U.S., his money is, is embezzling and laundering money. Why would you do that? More importantly, as a dad, I think he loves his son. Why would he say, oh yeah, son, you sure you know what you're doing? The guy is Tony Soprano. He will kill you with a chainsaw. I'd love an actual answer because it looks suspiciously like the Bidens were legitimizing and protecting a billionaire thug. I want to concentrate tonight on legitimizing, giving him the keys to the castle. The United States is endorsing you can do business with him. Why in God's green earth would we tell the rest of the world, hey, this guy's okay. He's open for business. What could possibly be the motivation? What could be the motivation? Interesting point. Now we're having, we're starting to see some information come out with the FBI rating those particular connections with Biden and Kolomoisky. You remember this? Uh, I believe back in May 2020, Attorney General Barr was asked about you know an investigation into Joe Biden, and uh, at Carluska P. Carly had a reminder. Pay close, pay close attention to the beginning of what the attorney general says. Involvement. Based on the information I have today, I don't expect Mr. Durham's work will lead to a criminal investigation of either man. Based on the information I have today. <laughs> Maybe the next day he had what he needed. Then the FBI raids the office, starts uh, getting these connections together, up, leading straight to Sleepy Joe, the guy who I believe is playing an act on us all to, you know, make it look like he's losing his mind. Well, then it leads to the next connection. I kept wondering why this particular person right here, Mukhauser, Muk, I'm sorry, I'm going to try this out. Mukarsal Powell. Why in the world did she scream at A.G. Barr? Well, not really scream, just give him the old shutdown. And I'm going to show that video to you in a second. But before we go there, well, maybe I'll go ahead and show that to you now, and then we'll talk about it. That is Chairman, what I will in, tell them, in, Mr. In our Barr. System, Thank you. And one last question, if I can. In our system. Under oath, under oath, do you commit to not releasing any report by Mr. Durham before the November election? No. You don't commit to that? No. So you I won't go by careful. Department of Justice policy I that, Justice that you won't policy. interfere in any the, political I'm, investigations before the November election? Not the time we're, we're not going to interfere. In Mr. fact, I've made it clear I'm not going to tolerate But under oath, you're saying that you do not commit to not releasing a report by Durham? I, I, I'm not going to. Uh, any report will, will be, in my judgment, not one that is covered by the, the policy and would disrupt the election. That now, is notice, just take a look. We'll slow it down a little bit, and you can do that on your own too, but I'm just going to slow down here. Look how she's pointing her finger at him, giving him a look, giving him those eyes like you better say yes that you're not going to release any investigation from Durham before the election. And she gives him the old, uh, I call the the liberal demonic squeeze look, the up and down and just give him that look of 
you better listen to me, you better say yes, and he refuses. He says no. You know, why in the world was she so well, adamant we'll about stopping this particular investigation being released prior to the election? Well, just so happens Ukrainian oligarch paid $700,000 to the husband of a House Judiciary Committee Democrat, and that's her. Robert Powell, the husband of this representative, Debbie, we'll call her, from uh, Democrat from Florida. She took 700000 from a Ukrainian oligarch named Igor, are you ready? Kolomoisky. That's right. And that money got, uh, you know, connected to her. Isn't that something? So President Donald Trump, for you know, they, they have a committee that drafted two articles of impeachment against President Trump for his alleged abuse of power with regards to Ukraine. But who's the one that abused power? This is from The Federalist. In 2018, the Daily Beast reported the number of businesses linked to Kolomoisky hired Powell as an attorney. One of those firms paid Powell, that's 700 grand. Well, while McCrossel Powell may have convinced her constituents that her husband's work is unrelated, it is clear conflict in the current impeachment of Trump. And that was uh, at the time when they were doing the impeachment. They were attacking Trump for the very thing that they were guilty of. Ronald McDowell reminded us that the Florida Democrat just voted to impeach the president. What got zero attention? Her husband took 700 k from firms tied to Ukrainian oligarch. Who happens to be Kolomowski? Well, who happens to have his offices being raided now? Huh. So there's a double standard here. Impeach the president for his work in Ukraine, simultaneously allowing her husband to earn money from Kolomowski. Very evil man. And then we understand even more why she's screaming and yelling. Well, I call it screaming and yelling, but she's having a hissy fit because she can't get him to say that he's not going to re release information before, you know, before the election. We're going to see how that plays out. Well, Sidney Powell had something to say about this also. All the legitimate information and truth they can get on the presidential candidates Biden has been engaging in pay to play for a long time, particularly to benefit Hunter and other members of his family. He and Obama and the whole Clinton crime cabal have been doing this, lining their own pockets in their globalist deals for years. This is the corruption that President Trump was sent to Washington to get rid of, and it's all just starting to come to light. I think we're going to find that it is far worse than we ever realized. We're going to find that it's far worse than anyone even realizes.